Are you not so trendy when it comes to music, fashion, chemistry? I can't help you with the other ones, but chemistry? Look no further. Let's get trendy with the trend team. Do you see the size of her bag? So trendy. Did someone say size? <laughs> Ionic size is a trend in chemistry that is key to style survival, especially when doing Professor Miller's most and least sections on the exams. Ionic size depends on the following. Electrons per zeph, positive or negative charge. The more negative, the bigger the ionic size. The more positive, the smaller the ionic size. When N increases, the ionic size increases, and when N decreases, the ionic size decreases, so it's a positive relationship with N. Now I'll use my trend sense to tell you the most or the least ionic size in these elements. <laughs> selenium has the smaller N between the elements selenium and tellurium, so that means that either of these seleniums will be the least amount of ionic size. The way that we determine from there is because when it's just a minus versus a two minus on the charge, the minus is less negative, and according to over here, the more positive, it's smaller. Tellurium has the higher N out of each of these elements, and this one has the most ionic size because the charge, the charge here is more negative, and according to that, the more negative, the bigger the ionic size. There's another trend that you should look for, and it's electronegativity. So the most electronegative element is fluorine, and that means that whatever element is closest to fluorine has the highest electronegativity. So, for instance, an element over here will have a lower electronegativity than an element that's right next to fluorine. Okay. So an example of this is oxygen has a higher electronegativity than cesium, because cesium is in this area, whereas oxygen is right next to fluorine, so it has a higher electronegativity than cesium. Okay, here's another trend about size. <laughs> Periodic table, the size of the elements increase going from the right to the left of the table and the top to the bottom of the table. So think of it as a upside down L going this way, this way. This way. So an example of this would be these four elements right here. So the top two elements, these two are going to be the smallest, but since this one is more to the right, it's gonna be the smallest. So out of these four, it's the smallest element. Whereas these two, they may be bigger than these two elements, but this one is the farthest to the left, so it's the biggest. And that's atomic size. Another trend that is vital to your style in chemistry is ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy needed to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gas phase atoms or ions in their ground state, and it's measured in kilojoules per mole. Ionization energy is the easiest, which means it requires the least amount of energy to remove an electron. Ionization energy moves from left to right and bottom to top on the periodic table. The other side of ionization energy is electron affinity. Ready? Electron affinity is the change in energy when one mole of electrons is added to one mole of an atom to form a monatomic anion and it's measured in kilojoules per mole. Just like the ionization energy trend, the electron affinity trend moves from left to right and from bottom to top on the periodic table. Sections though. Halogens in group 17 have the most negative electron affinity of their rows, so that disrupts the trend from left to right. This is because the relatively high zep experienced by the electrons in the halogen's valence shell p orbitals. So energy is released here because the anions they form have the same electron configurations of noble gases. The noble gases have positive electron affinity, meaning you, they need energy to add an electron because they're happy the way they are with their um, electron orbitals. Beryllium, magnesium, and nitrogen also have positive electron affinity energy. The or, um, electron orbital for nitrogen, you can see that it has a half-filled p orbital, but when you add an electron, um, you would have to fill one of these orbitals, and nitrogen doesn't like that. Do I have a hot trend for you? <laughs> Melting.
melting and boiling points. So the melting point of a solid is the temperature at which it melts, pretty self-explanatory. And then the boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid vaporizes. Both melting and boiling points increase going down the periodic table, and they also increase going towards the middle of the periodic table. And that's because the metals have higher melting points because they're really good conduct conductors of electricity and heat and therefore need higher temperatures to melt. Just cut that. Tellurium has the higher end, so it's the mo Selenium is What is this one called? Now, there's another trend that you should look out for, and it's electronegativity. Electronegativity is the... Huh. Here's another trend about size. Oh, I just... It almost... On the periodic table, as the air... As the... the, hmm, the so, well, what is this one called? The other... Oh, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Melting point is the temperature at which a solid melts. I feel like that 